So the 2021 draft came and went for the Baltimore Ravens, but in a period after the draft that's just as important was the undrafted rookie free agents. And yesterday the Ravens signed nine undrafted rookie free agents, one of them being Ardarius Washington. And I think he was the one out of the nine that really got the most hype and who fans were like super, super excited for. So what I did was go watch some film to see exactly why. Why are fans so excited about our Darius Washington from TCU? And what I found was pretty good. Uh, but before we get into that, team keep it clean. I got to say that I really appreciate y'all. And please do not let anybody tell you just because you didn't come out the pandemic making all this money. You're not a millionaire ever since the pandemic. Then you're not winning. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, just because you ain't start a business during the pandemic, then you're a loser. No, man. Don't nobody want to hear none of that. And, and I hate seeing stuff like that because people try to propel themselves and make themselves like they're greater than somebody else just because during the pandemic they made a nice little chunk of money. Like, no, man, stop that. So people are just trying to get out of the pandemic with their mentals intact. That's good enough. If you got that, you're winning right there. Even if you don't, you're still winning, man, because you're still going. So as long as you're still going, as long as you're still pushing, just keep that, man. All that, oh man, oh, I mean, I got a business in the pandemic. That's nice and good for you, but you ain't got to try to tear somebody else down just because that worked out for you and it didn't work out for them. So y'all keep your heads up, man, and y'all stay up. Uh, but anyway, on to uh, our Darius Washington. Um, he went undrafted. A lot of people thought he would be a day two or day three pick, uh, but he didn't get selected at all. And a lot of people wondered why. Uh, one of the things that I thought, and which is very, it's, it's, un, it's an unfortunate part of the business, uh, but I thought maybe it's because of his size. His counterpart, uh, Morig, got drafted in the second round uh, by the Las Vegas Raiders. Okay, so the Ravens will see him week one. Uh, but anyway, um, our Darius Washington is about 5'8". Uh, Morig is about six one six two, so I think that really just put him up there, uh, and, and because there were a lot of people that continued to compare the two, and said the the two had a lot of similar traits and characteristics when it came to their play style, uh, but I think size it, it made a big difference in him just not being selected. But when I watched him, <laughs> he does not play small, man. He does not play small. We've talked about it so many times when there's a, there are players that they can be the tallest of the tall. They can be the biggest of the big, but they may not play to their size. He is on the opposite end of that spectrum to where he's smaller, he's shorter, but he doesn't play to his size. He plays bigger. The first thing that stood out to me when I watched film on him was tackling. Not hitting, but tackling. This guy he tackles very well, and, and that is such an important role for safety because usually as a safety, you are the last line of defense when it comes to the opposing offense. You are back there on an island all by yourself a lot of times, and that this is after a running back or a quarterback or receiver has gotten past the defensive line. They've gotten past the linebackers. They've gotten past the corners. So it's just up to the safety to make that stop. And he is very good at just wrap up tackling. And the thing about him, he would make a tackle, whether it's deep, whether it's in the box, whether it's behind a line of scrimmage. He was a very, 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 like a very, very good tackler, a consistent tackler as well. So I, I, I just, I, I love that about him. That was probably my favorite, favorite, favorite aspect about his game was the tackling. Uh, they had him, they, they moved him around. He wasn't just a free safety. He wasn't just a box safety. They moved him around all over the field. They had him playing deep. They had him playing in the box. They had, they had him playing everywhere. So, you know, Ravens, Ravens saw that and they were like, ooh. Their eyes roll to the back of their head. They just start going crazy because that's exactly what the Ravens love. They love players that can do different things. They love it, especially on defense. <laughs> especially on defense, man. So that gives him a leg up uh, in this race for a safety spot uh, on this roster. Now, one thing about him uh, that I also liked was that he is very instinctive. 
and he really trusts his instincts. Now, there were a few times where I did see where his instincts, they ended up being wrong. But even when they were wrong, he, he got great recovery speed and he has good closing speed. He closes very, very well. Uh, but back to even when his instincts were wrong, I love that he trusts himself and he trusts what he believes to be true. And you can see that reflecting in his game. And what I mean when I say that is that if he felt like the quarterback kept the ball on an RP on a read option, then hey, he trusted and fully believed it and he was going for it. If he felt like this receiver was the quarterback was getting ready to throw this to this receiver on his crossing route, then he was like, okay, let me do what I gotta do to jump it, to try to break it up, to try to make sure that this receiver does not catch this football. I, and I, I love that because that's we talk about it all the time that football is a lot more mental than it is physical. We talk about it all the time. And if you don't, you could be the biggest, you could be the fastest, you could be the strongest, you could be all this different stuff. But if you don't trust what's up here, if you're like if you're unsure of yourself up here then it's going to reflect on the football field. People are going to see that. Players are going to see that. Coaches are going to see that. And they're going to be like, mm, nah, get this dude off the field. Get him off. He's unsure of himself. Get him out of here. Because we see it all the time from different players. When they're rattled, you can tell. When somebody's under their skin, you can tell. So I, I, I love that he really, really trusts himself because that makes such a big difference in his game. Such a big difference. And with him joining the Baltimore Ravens, with them signing him, I know uh, they, they usually keep one, maybe two sometimes, undrafted rookie free agents every single year. And this year, I believe with the 17th game, the rosters go from 53 to 55, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm about 83% sure. So that other 17%, we got to get that confirmed. But anyway... I do seriously believe, and I'm not just saying this because he got a lot of hype around him, but I do seriously believe that he has a legitimate shot at making the roster. The reason I say that is because when you look around the Ravens roster, safety is a position where it's a, it's a lot of unknowns right now. A lot, a lot of unknowns in the current, but more so unknowns for the future. Currently, your starting safeties, Chuck Clark, Deshaun Elliott. What's going to happen there, especially with Deshaun Elliott? Uh, this is the last year of his deal. We haven't heard anything about the Ravens being in possible talks of an extension with him. And I, I, I don't think that they would be right now, especially because of how the first two years went. Now, Deshaun Elliott, he has some freak injuries. Uh, I think the first year, the rookie year, was to his, uh, he broke his forearm. And then the second year was his knee. Or maybe it was rookie year was his knee and the second year was his forearm. Either way. He had those freak injuries and he missed the majority of his first two seasons. Last year was his very first season starting. He did a good job too, especially given the fact that he was not expected to start uh, the season because we still had Earl Thomas. Of course, Earl Thomas, he felt like he wanted to swing on people and he wanted to go to car washes instead of practice and so on and so forth. And, and I really do think the Ravens would just... I personally think that they were just looking for an out. So I think they started leaking some stories intentionally so they could make it. Anyway, he didn't, help the, he didn't help himself with putting out the practice tape and swinging on Chuck Clark. Anyway, but that's besides the point. Deshaun Elliott did, was not expected to be the starter. He did not know he was going to be the starter. We did not know he was going to be the starter. But he ended up being a starter because of the situation. And he did a good job. And as the season continued on, he got better and better. But bottom line, this is the last year of his deal. It is not a guarantee that he's back with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, nothing is set in stone. We just got to see what happens. I do believe that they will really just let this thing play itself out, see how he does this year. And it, it's all up to them if they trust him. It's going to be a lot. A, a lot will factor with trust. Hey, you missed the first two years, but then if he can finish this year, hey, you played the last two years. How do you trust him moving forward? Because we know he can play. And the thing about Deshaun Elliott, that dude ain't afraid of nobody. He ain't afraid to make no tackle on nobody. Very physical guy. But there's uncertainty there for the future. And even behind Deshaun Elliott and behind Chuck Clark, we have uh, Jordan Richards. He signed to a one-year deal. We have Anthony Levine. He signed to a one-year deal. Uh, we have Nigel Warrior. Uh, we have Geno Stone. He signed to a one-year deal. 
So it's a lot of one year deal guys at at the safety position. There's not much depth there at all. Well, not that there's much depth. There's, there's not much future depth there at all. So with Ardarius Washington, with none of none of the safeties, in my opinion, none of the safeties behind Deshaun Elliott and Chuck Clark are safe. None of them, especially with them all being on not only one year deals, but very cheap one year deals. So there's going to be plenty of competition at backup safety. And then they have the draft pick. I believe Brandon Stevens or Brandon. Yeah, Brandon Stevens, the third round pick. Or was it Stevenson? I think it's Stevenson. Either way, my apologies. I, I, I can't think of his name off the top of my head right now. I'm sorry for that. Um, but they have their third round pick that they drafted, who they said that he, he could play some corner. He could play some safety. They want to have him at free safety. So there's that. So he's he's going to make the team. But again, there's a lack of depth there. So the Ravens uh, training camp will come and training camp will go. And that's where that competition for at, at the safety position. That's where it's, it's going to be a lot of competition there. And I really do believe that is one of those spots where somebody who you didn't think was going to get cut, they could get cut. Again, because nothing there is set in, like nothing there is set in stone. Nothing at all. There's so much uncertainty at that safety position behind Deshaun Elliott and Chuck Clark. After that, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So he, uh, he is in a very, very good position. If he can come in and really show these Ravens like, hey, yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. If he can really show those instincts, if he can really show that physicality that I saw when I watched film on him, if he can really show that he is a great wrap-up tackler on, on, on this professional level in the NFL, man, he certainly got a shot. Straight up, man. He, he certainly got a shot. Because, again, he's not at a position where it's like, okay, Ravens got that. Like, if it was for cor a corner position, for example, in the secondary, at corner, Ravens already got their locks, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, Tavon Young possibly, uh, Wade, they got uh, Jimmy Smith, they Anthony Avis in the mix too. Like, they, they got a lot of guys at the cornerback position. He got a lot of guys at cornerback position. So if, if he was an undrafted rookie free agent, he was a corner, then I'd be like, oh, I, I don't know about that one. But the fact that it says safety and there are not a lot of locks there. So he got a shot. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. We will be looking at some more undrafted rookie free agents coming very, very soon. Appreciate you. And again, remember. Don't let nobody tell you that you ain't winning, man. Just because oh, I ain't come out the, the pandemic. I ain't make the pandemic a pandemic. Shout out to Migos. But it's like, no, no. Don't worry about none of that, man. Y'all keep your heads up. Keep pushing. Keep going. I love y'all, each and every one of y'all. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you for what you do. And we out, man.